Hello, in this video we'll continue with our gross income problem sets and we'll talk about gross income problem 9. Strawberry analyzes a potential tax shelter for employer. So Strawberry is in a tax account and working at um, a various, let's say a, um, a big corporation. In consideration for doing this service, uh, she receives a $100 share of her employer's common stock which has a par value of $10 per share and a fair market value of $15 per share on the date of receipt. Now, at the end of the year, on December 31st, the same stock has a fair market value of $11. So it's gone from a fair market value of $10 per share to down to $11 per share, and the $10 par value remains the same. All right, so we're worrying about gross income. We're dealing with income tax here. Whenever we have an income tax issue, we always start with our favorite five questions. So first, what amount of income, if any, Second, what amount of deduction or credit, if any? So first question deals with inflow. Second question deals with outflow. Third is when do we have income or deduction or credit? Fourth is who has income, deduction, or credit? And fifth is what is the character? Now we're going to focus on the income issues. So we're really focused on what amount of gross income, if any? When is there any gross income, if any? And who? And the when question, again, I just want to reiterate, deals with the tax return year. So we're dealing with strawberries, an individual files a calendar year tax return. So we're dealing with issues with respect to that year. So this is all taking place the same year. So it, there's not really a when issue. It's all in, within that year. It has to be potentially recorded. If, you know, So we're dealing with the same year, not dealing with multiple years here. Who? We're looking at strawberry. We're looking specifically at strawberry. So there's no real issue there. We're not worrying about the corporation paying it. We're dealing with gross income to strawberry. So the what amount, we got to focus on the definition of gross income. Looking at the code, section 61 deals with gross income. says income from whatever source derived, very broad definition. Glenshaw Glass specifically focuses on um, a definition. Um, this is from the Supreme Court jurisprudence. And it states that uh, gross income is... There must be an undeniable accession to wealth, which means that net worth, which is assets minus liabilities, has increased. There must be um, a realization event. Realization event. And finally, there must be complete dominion and control. So we go through this analysis and we look at the beginning of the tax year versus the end of the tax year. At the beginning of the tax year, Strawberry does not have the shares. At the end of the tax year, Strawberry receives 100 shares, which do have some value. We'll talk about how we value it in a moment, but we do have some value. So an asset has gone up with respect to Strawberry's um, financial situation. So boom, we have net worth. Realization. Strawberry is analyzing a potential tax shelter. What is that? It's services. And services always are met with realization because Think about it. Realization is all about severance and the actual outcome, right? This potential tax shelter, the idea, it came from those services. They're severable or separable. And then finally, there must be complete dominion and control. So with respect to dominion and control, are there any strings attached to this? You know, can um, Strawberry not sell the stock or, or do anything with the stock, has to hold on to the stock for many years? So maybe if this was like a stock option or, you know, that couldn't be transferred or, you know, some stock that um, could not be sold or done anything, you have to keep it for a certain time, it's a vest, that would be an example of dominion and control. But that's not an issue here. Strawberry gets these shares as a result of doing this service and according to the facts, Strawberry can do as she sees fit. She could sell it the next day after she gets them on the receipt on July 31st. That's not an issue. Okay, now Strawberry still has them. Um, we'll, we'll see um, the next issue is, okay, we have, net, we have gross income under the definition. And then Congress does not lay out any exception to this, just so you know, when we talk about our exclusions later on. So we do have gross income. But the question here is, the real question is, so we've gone through our what, or when and who. Remember, when we talk about what, it's really what amount. So valuation is really the issue here. What amount do we record? What amount does Strawberry record? Strawberry is going to record during this tax year. So we have our who question, Strawberry. We have our when question, this tax year. The what, we know Strawberry has to record gross income, but blank, how much? How much gross income is recorded? Gross income equal to how much, okay? Strawberry includes, also records on the tax return. So another word to say that is includes, with respect to gross income, how much? 
So we have a few different options here. We have the par value on receipt, which is $10. That's our first option. Our second option is, so that's par value on receipt. Par value on receipt. Our second option is the $15 uh, fair market value on the date of receipt. And remember, par value is the actual amount printed on the stock certificate, which can a lot of time, which a lot of times will be different than the fair market value. Um, just so you know, and that date is on July 31st. So on receipt, on receipt, which is um, July 31st. So that is 7:31. And then the third option, because the par value stays the same, right? Um, so that's still it's ten dollars. The third option is end of the year. It goes down in value. So 1231, which is still within the same tax year, we're dealing with a fair market value. Sorry, we're dealing with a fair market value of $11. $11 at the end of the year. So the question becomes do we use 10, 15, or 11? Now, again, I've mentioned this in previous videos, but when we look at gross income, the regulations under Section 61, so in the regulations under Section 61, we use fair market value, which is what a willing buyer and willing seller agree. But the key here is that we focus on fair market value. So that eliminates our par value because that is not fair market value. We're not using par value here. So that leaves us with two options, the fair market value on receipt or the fair market value at the end of the year. So you might be thinking, oh, well, okay, well, end of the year, doesn't that make more sense because it's closer to when we file the tax return? That does not matter. Under the regs, we look at the date of receipt. We look at the date of receipt. So that means we eliminate the fair market value at the end of the year, and we use the $15 fair market value on receipt. So we take the $15 fair market value on receipt times 100 shares, and that gives us $1,500 total, $1,500 total. So that means Strawberry is going to include or record $1,500 of gross income for the year, $1,500 of gross income for the year with respect to this transaction. And that's what goes on the tax return. And if you think about this, this makes sense. Why would you look at the end of the year? Think about a taxpayer that receives the stock on July 31st and then on August 1st turns around the next day and sells it for the $15 they would get the $1,500. So it makes more sense to use this $1,500 on the date that it's actually received. It's actually received. So it's all about receipt when you receive the actual property. That's the, that's the actual value that we use on receipt. So this will help you whenever you have a transaction with multiple valuation dates.